We all know the popular groups that came from reality survival shows, but do you remember Promise 9? Of course you do. Created from the survival show Idol School with hits like DKDK, Love Bomb, and Fun, Promise 9's up there with popular girl groups at the moment. Then why talk about them? Well, Promise 9 actually hasn't had a comeback in a year, and the reason behind that is quite unusual. Their story is very interesting if you actually dig into it. So today we're gonna go over that, the members, the train wreck that was Idol School, and where are they now? But before looking forward, I always like to look back. Before we get started, only 14% of people that watch my videos are subscribed. If you aren't already, hit that subscribe and the bell so you don't miss a new What Happened video every single Friday. Let's go back to 2017. In the heyday of the Produce 101 series, Mnet thought they should create a different type of reality show. One where 41 female contestants not only competed in the school, but also lived together in the dorms for the next 11 weeks. The contestants were recruited by producers. They were looking for some trainees that aren't in a company at the moment, or former trainees or former idols that debuted. In idol school, the contestants would not only compete with performances, but also learn about the history of cake pop and how to become an idol. With votes at the end of every episode determining the contestants' grades, in the end, only nine would get to debut. And those nine were. Cutie in 9th place, a talented trainee with tons of musical instruments. Jihon in 8th place, an on and off aspiring K-pop idol who auditioned for Willem Entertainment but didn't become a trainee. More known for her modeling on fashion websites. Soyeon at 7th place, now Soyeon unlike a lot of contestants had a long trainee time at none other than YG Entertainment, training in the infamous pre-debut group Future 21 for nearly 8 years. Jiwon at 6th place, a former JYP trainee for 3 years and a contestant on 16, the show that created twice. Na Kyung at 5th place, a trainee of 2 years who studied in China and learned to speak Mandarin. Taeyong at 4th place, along with Jiwon was another JYP entertainment trainee. Serum at third place, a trainee for four years whose biggest experience is in dramas and commercials. Ha Young at second, a composer and songwriter with experiences in participating in hip hop dance competitions. And Ji Sun in the first place spot, the member with the least amount of training time with only nine months. These were ordinary girls. Now, yes, some of them were experienced trainees, but not already debuted idols like on the Produce 101 series. And it was all determined by the votes of the viewers. Or so we thought. Again, we'll get to know how Idol School was rigged from the beginning and the horrible conditions for the contestants later. And so this group was ready to debut with fans coming up with the name Promise 9, meaning from Idol School and Promise in Korean. Also that promise was to become the best girl group. They took the first step by performing at the Mnet Asian Music Awards in 2017 in Japan with the pre-debut release Glass Shoes. Imagine the first stage you get to perform on is MAMA where all of Asia and even the world is watching, but they handled it like professionals. Then finally, Promise 9 would get to debut in January of 2018. They began to fulfill that promise to become the best girl group. The girls introduced themselves with Two Heart, a graduation theme song to celebrate the group's graduation from idol school and now ready to take on K-pop as idols. Now let's get a little more business. To understand how Promise 9 would be managed, let's break it down. Instead of a temporary group with a one or five year contract like IOI or Eyes One, Promise 9 was created to be a permanent group, like any other K-pop group. First managed by Pledis Entertainment, then Mnet and CJNM created the label Off The Record. Both Eyes One and Promise 9 was placed under that new label. So in a way, these two girl groups are linked, which could explain why Promise 9 hasn't gotten a comeback in a while. And we'll get to that. But their first mini album would go on to sell a modest 7,000 copies, ultimately selling 20k by today's date, and debut at number 4 on the Guyon chart. This was a very solid showing for the potential of Promise 9. Sadly, fans of Promise 9 were only able to enjoy a 9-member group for a couple of months before member Kyori entered the newest season of the Produce series, Produce 48, in May of 2018. As a way to probably bolster the popularity of Promise 9 since they were still a rookie group. And even on Produce 48, Kyori achieved a lot, making it to the third elimination and finishing 25th out of 101. Not too bad if you ask me, and I'm probably the worst person to ask because I'm happy with a B-. Now while Kyori was participating in Produce 48, the rest of the girls were gearing up for a great comeback. Again, 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 again. 
making everyone's hearts go Dugan, 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 Dugan. Promise Nine dropped the title track DKDK attacking people's hearts when they watched it. And what, what the hell? That's a big ass cat. That's probably the scariest thing I've seen in my life. Oh, anyways, back to the song. It was just plain fun with the repetitive chorus that sticks in your brain like some dark, cute magic. The two-day album with DKDK as the title performed as well as their debut, hitting number four on the Guyon chart and selling 20,000 albums by 2020. Slowly, Promise 9 was building off of not only their following from Idol School, but Produce 48 as Gyuri returned to the group and Promise became a full lineup again. Also in the summer, when KCON was announcing their artist lineup, Promise 9 was named to perform. A fantastic opportunity to put on a show for fans in LA and America and Thailand. I was actually there in LA and I didn't really care for Promise until I saw DKDK live and then I looked a little bit like this guy. Up until now, Promise has been steadily rising in K-pop. Sales were consistent, and the songs released were cute and enjoyable. But there was that spark yet to be lit. Promise 9 was about to blow up with their new release, literally. This was Love Bomb. You probably heard it in 2018, as it was Promise 9's breakout moment in K-pop. The song was addicting and had high energy and was playful. Compared to their previous songs, Love Bomb was a change in style and the first time we've seen this side of Promise 9. Also, this song came in a time when newer groups were all getting their breakthroughs and creating some song of the year tracks. In 2018, we seen along with Love Bomb, Boom Boom by Momoland, Shine by Pentagon, and Love Scenario by Icon. What do all of these have in common besides being straight bops that would be future K-pop classics? All of these songs brought their groups to a new level of popularity. In my opinion, 2018 had some of the best songs we've seen from different groups in a long time, all in one year. Love Bomb improved not only sales by over 10,000 copies, but also helped Promise 9 debut on the Melon Charts Top 100 and peaked at number 3 on Guyon. It also got a bit of traction internationally on the iTunes charts. 2018 was a huge growing year for Promise 9. So as everyone rang in the new year of 2019, you can only imagine Promise 9's potential. The year started out with Yuri putting in even more work by appearing on the web drama Compulsory Dating Education with Luna's Chu. But back at Off the Record, they were working with Promise 9 to bring a little fun back into people's lives this summer. As you can see, this was Promise 9's first single album, Fun Factory, and the title track, Fun. It was promised time in the summer sun with this electric pop song in the same vein as Love Bomb. But mixing in some different moments of musical color, Promise 9 got to show even more of this comeback. And if you take a look at the lyrics for the song, they rhymed Ariana Grande with Kuromde. A lyric that has yet to be taught by anyone in the music industry uh, ever. Promise 9 would promote not only fun, but the B-side love Rum Pum Pum. Extending the promotion time for this new album, but Promise failed to get their first win, which was what a lot of fans were hoping for for this group. But the moment wasn't lost, as Promise built up a very strong fan base in Korea, doubling the sales of their previous album, selling over 60,000 to date. We also got to see them rank second on the Gaion, the highest for Promise 9 yet. But now it's 2020, and we haven't seen a new single or album out of Promise for over a year. What happened? Well, Promise was actually preparing to debut in Japan with a digital single of Love Bomb. But those plans were postponed as a little known sickness hit Asia and quickly spread around the globe. Now, while Promise hasn't been releasing music, they have been pretty active on their V app and YouTube channel with their original content. You would think that they're just waiting for a good opportunity to set a comeback date. But back in 2019, the voting manipulation scandal of the produced series had a domino effect in K-pop. Idol School had its own investigation into the show being rigged. The story blew up when a contestant on Idol School, Di Hae-in, sat down and had an interview explaining her experience on the program, and the details were not pretty. She first talked about how the show claimed there was an audition process. 3,000 trainees showed up, but those that actually made it onto the show 
weren't at those auditions. They were apparently already chosen by the producers. Lee Hae-in was also suspiciously cut in the final episode when she was a fan favorite that was always ranked high. Even viewers were shocked she was eliminated by training the search terms Hae-in Ni and Idol School. Not only that, but there was claims of mistreatment and bad filming conditions. Trainees were on a strict diet even when they didn't need it. Their phones were also taken away during shooting with no way to contact others. The sets they filmed on were just recently made so the smell of paint was really strong. There's a lot more that happened on the show that I can't talk about, you'll have to search it for yourself. So with that news coming out around the tail end of 2019, I'm sure this is why Promise 9 has been on this hiatus. Like I said, they are still active and it's not as bad as being completely silent. But you can see the members are a bit bored and wanting to be back to creating music and promoting. Another possible reason for the hiatus is the fact that I mentioned before that both Promise 9 and Eyes 1 is managed by the same company, off the record. They're a new label, and I don't know how many employees they have, but since the Purdue scandal, they've been working hard to get IS-1 up and running again, with a comeback that just happened days ago. IS-1 was probably priority over Promise 9. But now that things are starting to clear up, I have hope that Promise 9 will be back faster than you think. The whole point of Idol School was to take ordinary girls with dreams of becoming an idol and make them just that. And to a point, they made a group that was smaller in size, notoriety, and some would say talent. But what they did have was a big heart and some big songs that had a big impact. I'd say don't worry about Promise 9. They'll be back bigger and better than ever. That's it for me and that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a like. And remember, only 14% of people that watch me are subscribed. So hit the subscribe and the bell so you don't miss a new What Happened video. What do you think about From Is 9? Uh, it feels like they've been and done a lot more than it seemed. Every time I do a What Happened, I just fall in love with more groups than I already do. Uh, hopefully the same is for you because I think From Is 9 is definitely coming back. They're definitely going to be around a lot longer. It's just that the company's taking their sweet ass time. <laughs> and uh, guys, we're almost about to hit 200K on the channel. Crazy. I remember back to when I hit 100. I was like, that's the milestone. Now we're at 200. But anyways, guys, if you want to support, make those videos possible. Head over to Patreon. Consider supporting over there. If you can't support on Patreon, no worries. Click on one of those videos over there, another What Happened video, or check out the whole playlist. But that's it for me. Hope you have a fantastic week. I got some exciting videos planned for some big comebacks that's coming really soon. So stick around for those. And yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Annyeong.